Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar session on improving your Formula SAE vehicle performance with the Free Adams Car Sponsorship. I'll be your host, Gabriel Pilater. With us today is Yijin Pham, the Product Marketing Manager for Adams at MSU Software, as well as Wei Wu, Multi-Body Simulation Engineer at Rivian Automotive, and former Formula SAE team captain. So Yijin is going to start us off with an introduction to Adams, and then Wei will share his experience with Adams Car in the Formula SAE competition. At the end, I will explain how to go about obtaining free licenses for Adams Car. And if you have any questions at any point in time in the webinar, please write them in the chat box, and we'll address those at the end in a 10-minute question and answer session. All right, and I'll pass it off to Yijin at this point. Thank you, Gabe. All right, first let's have a brief overview of what is uh, Adams to those of you who are not familiar with uh, this software. So Adams is a multi-body dynamic software that has been used by almost every mechanical engineering industries uh, in the world. We have people using Adams in automotive. For example, the top, the 24 out of the top 25 automakers by volume use Adams on a daily basis. Now, besides automotive industry, we have um, people using Adams for aerospace industry, for example, Boeing, Airbus, NASA. Um, besides those two big industries, we have uh, other uh, interesting areas like robotics, heavy equipment. So we have companies like Fanuc or John Deere's Caterpillar. They're all using Adams uh, very regularly. Okay, what is the differences between Adams and maybe your familiar since you are on FSAE competition? Uh, you probably are using some kind of uh, FEA analysis tools for structural analysis. So what's the fundamental differences between Adams as a multi-body dynamic software and, and, for example, a structural analysis tool like MSC Nastram? So Adams, um, one of the main differences is that Adams focuses more on the system level analysis, while the FEA software or tools, they focus more on the component level. Let me give you an example. We, have, we had a customer a few years, years ago, they observed a brake noise from one of the vehicles that they produce, but they could not reproduce that same noise on the bench test with only the brake system. So what we did is that we did a service project for that customer and we combined both the suspension system and the brake system into one Adams model. And from analyzing, from multi-body dynamics analyzing, we found out that it's not the brake system itself, but it's more like the exciting of the brake into one of the components in the suspension system that has caused a resonance effect which uh, you know produce that kind of a brake more noise. So if you would have studied that only in the brake system itself, you would have never found that problem. But when you combine different subsystems into one model, one platform, you will be able to study things or observe things more than you could do if you're only observing from a component level or subsystem level. Another common application for multi-body dynamics or atoms is to predict loads for FEA. Uh, as we know, dynamic loads are far more complex to predict than static loads, especially if you're talking about a complex ma moving mechanism with many parts interaction with each other. It's almost impossible for you to um, directly calculate those dy dynamic loads you know, using hand calculation. So you have to rely on a sophisticated tool like Adams for your multi-body dynamics loads prediction. When you have an accurate low, then you will be able to use that as an accurate boundary condition for your subsequent structural analysis or fatigue analysis. Almost every mechanism has one or more control systems. And one of the ways to evaluate your control system before you actually produce your product is to connect with a virtual prototype such as Adams to validate your control logic inside this virtual mechanism. In this way, you will be able to find out if whether or not your control, your control system works, whether it be an electrical system, uh, a hydraulic system, or just a control system by itself. And combining Adams with different control software can, uh, can enable you to really 
study or validate your control algorithms before you use any real product. And as we know, Adams Car is a pro customized product we design for automotive industry. It is mainly used for you to study, for example, the vehicle maneuvering events, or study the comfort, ride and comfort, or even generate the, ro the road loads for the other departments to calculate, for example, the FPA, the stretch, stress and strain, or the durability of certain components. And it, it is highly customized. You can build a vehicle fairly quickly within the system. And also, using that, it only takes a fraction of time to evaluate your vehicle performance compared with driving your vehicle on a real test rig or driving your vehicle on the proving ground. And Wei is going to actually talk to you more about Adam's car and how you can use that in your FSA competition. A few case studies before we pass it over to Wei. Uh, first, the, one of the famous projects people did with Adams is actually the Curiosity rover landing sequence. There's a movie called uh, Seven Minutes of Terror, which means it takes about seven minutes, over seven minutes for the signal to be transmitted from the surface of the Mars to the surface of the Earth. And the landing sequence actually will, the entire landing sequence will take place within seven, seven minutes, which means by the time uh, the rover is already on the ground, uh, we haven't, the human on Earth have not received the signal yet whether or not it's successful or not. And I was uh, very fortunate in, to interview one, uh, the chief engineer from the, this Curiosity landing sequence project. And that engineer mentioned to me that, saying that it's almost impossible in this scenario for them to test the whole landing sequence on Earth because of the differences in gravity between Mars and Earth. So they had to rely on a simulation tool like Adams to help them evaluate the kind of um, the dynamic loads on the rover itself during the landing or the connection or the integration with their control systems. They want to validate everything and they heavily rely on a simulation tool before they actually start or the, before they actually launch this program. So that just shows the confidence uh, the NASA has in Adams calculation and the simulation itself. Very common applications of atoms in automotive industry are things like handling, comfort or fatigue life, prediction. Uh, you can drive a vehicle on the road just as you did uh, as you're driving a real vehicle on a proving ground. And you can do, you can evaluate, you can study things uh, much faster and you can do design iterations much easier than you could do with a real physical prototype. And nowadays, we are, we are, although we say that Atoms is a multi-body dynamic software, which is a mostly rigid body based, recent technologies have enabled us to actually incorporate flexible bodies, which means the flexibility uh, of the components in your system level models, both um, the linear, both on a linear level and a non-linear level. In this example, you're seeing. Uh, is that a Volvo Car Corporation? They're doing a. Um, they're actually hitting, doing a test of uh, hitting the vehicle on the side curb, and when it reaches, when the speed is over a certain limit, you will actually as observe a plastic deformation on one of the lower control arms. So that is an incorporation of material and geometric nonlinearity inside atoms, and that's also something you can do with the help of modern technology inside of Adam's software. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna pass the presenter to Wei. And okay, um, hello everybody. Thank you for joining this webinar with me. Um, so today, uh, I have a list of topics that I wanna to touch for this uh, presentation. First, I'll start with a very brief self-introduction, and then I'm gonna dive um, into the topic Adam's car for Pono SAE. I want to show you how I used um, Adam's car when I was a student in Formula SAE team, and also uh, some experience that I've gained through uh, my real world industry application of Adam's. And then I want to show you a demo of how to 
run an atoms for vehicle simulation, and then uh, extract some load uh, from the results of the simulation. Um, and last but not least, I want to share some um, tips with you guys on how to uh, use the Formula SAE um, database that uh, MSA software prepared for you guys. Um, I think uh, just a few tips, but I, I think uh, it would be uh, very helpful when you uh, are met with some difficulties uh, in your simulation. Okay. So let's get started. Uh, my name is Wei Wu. Uh, right now, I am a full-time multi-body simulation engineer at Rivian Automotive. Um, we are a startup company in Michigan, and I am a member of the chassis team. Uh, my, my responsibility includes uh, suspension geometry design uh, and suspension kinematics and compliance uh, definition. So I started using Adams when I was a uh, college student, I think when I was a uh, sophomore. Um, so it has been almost uh, six years since I first started using it. Um, I have uh, spent um, about two years in the Formula team and then about two years uh, in a Formula Hybrid team. Um, so I use uh, Adam's car for the suspension design mainly for the Formula SA team. Uh, and, I, and then I use Adam's uh, to verify the electronic stability controller of uh, our Formula Hybrid team. So I, I, I am aware that uh, some of the participants of uh, today's event comes from uh, Formula, Electric, Formula Electric teams. So it's been um, kind of a growing um, uh, area uh, recently. So I think I want to also touch a bit on this topic in my presentation today to tell you guys how you can actually include um, the design of your vehicle controller into your uh, Adams car simulation framework. So um, regardless of uh, your position in your team, um, when you are presented with the task to design a Formula SE race car, you have a lot of questions to ask yourself. Actually, I asked every single of these questions to myself when I was in the team. For example, um, you know, as a starting point, where do I put the suspension hard points? How do I design it? Um, as a driver or as a vehicle dynamics engineer, you might want to ask, does the new car handle better uh, than the previous one? Um, if, you are, you want, if you are a testing engineer trying to set up the car for testing, what should be some of the static setups like the camber angle or the toe angle? Is, uh, is that negative 0.5, negative 1, or even negative 2? Uh, which one is a good starting point? And also, if you are a component a design engineer, you you are designing, for example, the knuckle or the control arm. What are the loads that are that are going to uh, be applied to these components? Um, you know, you need to use these loads to set up uh, the simulation. And also, if you are designing uh, some advanced vehicle controllers, for example, ABS controller, torque vectoring controller, or electronic stability controller. You want to verify the effect of these controllers um, with your base chassis system. So you have all these kind of questions, and you have about three to six months of design time, and you only have one uh, prototype vehicle which will be carried to the racetrack. It's almost impossible to finish the task without some kind of simulation technique. And Adam's car is a really uh, good fit for this kind of uh, scenario. So Adam's car comes to help you to solve the problem because it tackles this um, scenario from various angles. You know, you can finish your suspension geometry design in Adam's. You can run full vehicle simulation in Adam's. You can uh, run you, you can run full vehicle simulation and at the same time, you're not only evaluating the vehicle performance, you are also getting um, the loads into the components uh, out of these simulation results. And on top of all of that, you can run the code simulation with MATLAB Simulink to verify your electronic controller. So you have this design, test, analyze, 
uh, iteration loop all done uh, in a single software. So next, I'm going to uh, break down um, these topics and uh, show you like how we use this in the Formula SAE design. So what I'm showing you guys right now is um, the suspension test rig in Adams. Uh, it includes, so we use this when we first started, you know, creating wireframe or defining the hard points of the suspension. So this test rig, you can add a su suspension system into it. You can add your uh, anti robot system into it. You can add the steering system into it. And you, you can also, if available, you can also include um, the tire model in this suspension test rig. So you set up the model, depending on your design, in this test rig. And then you use atoms to run simulations um, in this simulation environment. So you have um, parallel wheel travel, you have opposite wheel travel, you have single wheel travel, and you have steer. Uh, these are just a few of them. There are even more. And you can even have the ability to define your customized uh, test procedure. But these just come out of the box when you have the Atom software. Um, so you can just instantly use this to evaluate your suspension design. So this is the test part. Um, of this iteration. And then, once you use atoms to run all these tests, you use atoms to uh, post process and analyze the data. So what I'm showing here is that on the right-hand side, you have the animation of the testing. On the left-hand side, you have the curves um, that uh, you get out of the simulation. And these are actually predefined um, results, you know, bump steer, bump camber, the Adams engineers know that we investigate these kind of um, design trade-offs on a daily basis, so they already defined this calculation for us. We just uh, run the simulation, and then we create plots. We focus on the result of the simulation instead of how to get this result. I think that is the most important part of you using Adams. You reduce a lot of time just to get the result and you use that time to uh, better design the car and optimize the performance. Um, and also, you can customize the post-processing curves. For example, motion ratio is not uh, a default um, result that we get out of atoms. You can actually define it, and the math is um, pretty simple. So you can include that in your um, your plus, and every time you run a simulation, you can observe what your motion ratio is, basically. So you set up the model, you test, you analyze the result, you do a few iterations, and then you probably have the front suspension um, at a very good uh, ballpark. Um, the next job is to fine tune the suspension geometry. For example, um, one of the headaches I had when I was a student is to define the tie rod hard point. It's really tricky because you have a lot of constraints. Um, you know, you have a lot of objectives at the same time. You, know, you want to have a certain bump steer. You have certain uh, argument, and you also want to have certain uh, brake toe compliance. But at the same time, it's constrained into a, such a small area, and these objectives themselves conflict with each other. So you need to have some kind of tool that helps you to run a ton of uh, simulations um, automatically, you know, maybe 20, maybe 30 simulations to help you arrive at a decent solution. So to achieve this goal, there is something uh, called design of experiments uh, with Adams Insight. If, uh, I believe if you have the Adams car uh, sponsorship, you are probably going to have this um, tool as well. Uh, you could ask uh, EG and Gabe for the details, but this is something that I've used. And even when I'm in uh, designing the car industry, I still use that all the time to set up um, the design of the experiment tests. 
Okay, so those are the tools that's going to help you design a single Excel, basically. You know, you have the front suspension design, you have the rear suspension design. Once all of that is done, you need to evaluate your design on a full vehicle basis. So what's left to be done in your is that you set up the full vehicle model, and then you start to run, the, again, some predefined events um, in Adams, you know, you have constant radius scoring, you have ramp steer. These are more like a quasi-static simulations. But on the other hand, you also have like impulse steer and step steer that looks more at the frequency response of the car. It's kind of a transient uh, simulation. These are all predefined as well. So if you have a model that works, you can have the model to run all of these virtual simulations easily. And then what's uh, really helpful for Adams is that if you want to change the setup of a car, it's just a few clicks. So imagine you want to change the spring stiffness uh, on your actual physical prototype. You have to have the car checked up and you have to um, unscrew all the bolts and nuts and have the, uh, have the spring replaced. But in Adams' car, it's just two or three clicks, and it's probably just a few seconds, and it's all done instantly. Um, one thing that I do want to uh, bring up is a tool that comes with Adam's car called Tire Data Fitting Tool. So if you are specifically a vehicle dynamics or a chassis engineer in a Formula SA team, you probably have heard of uh, the so-called TTC uh, tire testing data. So if you have um, the TTC tire testing data with some degree of uh, pre-process, you are actually able to use um, the tool called Tire Data Fitting Tool in Atoms to create um, a tire model that works in Atoms, that gives you the ability to uh, simulate your vehicle with the correct tire model. So I think for the uh, chassis or vehicle dynamics engineer, here, I do not need to stress how important tire data is uh, in our simulation. It basically can change the entire response of the car. So this is something that I was not aware of when I was a student, actually. Um, so later when I when I graduated and when I started to use Adams on more uh, in a more uh, complicated uh, scenario, I found out this tool and. Um, I was like, okay, I really need to introduce this tool to all of the students because they, are, they need to include this uh, in their simulation. Okay, um, so I'm going, I, actually I think I'm going really fast um, because um, the idea of my presentation is to show you guys what Adams can do. So it's probably not a step-by-step -step tutorial to show you how to actually use this, but I think it is important for you to know that Adams can do this and then you can spend uh, more time you know, reading the documentation or just Google, Googling these um, techniques uh, online. So you, know, you have the model set up, you have a, a full vehicle simulation run. Now you actually, you're going to generate some loads uh, to help the design engineers should design the components that will sustain um, the endurance race. Um, so you have two options here. One is called half car static load case. Um, in this scenario, you are basically still running a suspension analysis. You artificially supply some loads uh, at the wheel and use that to uh, drive the loading in the suspension. Uh, on the other hand, you have a full vehicle um, scenario, which I am showing right now. So you basically, you run a full vehicle simulation. So what I'm showing is a brake event. You see um, the load transfer from uh, rear to the front during a brake. And then on the left-hand side, I'm plotting uh, the longitudinal forces uh, at the lower and upper control arm. Uh, outer ball joints. So 
you have the fluid simulation done and you can get the loads uh, from the event at the same time. So uh, what's unique about Formula SAE is that you are actually racing the car in a pretty uh, constrained uh, setting. You know, you have your brake testing, you have your autocross event, you have your acceleration event, you have the figure eight event. So you actually know pretty well um, what the car is going to be uh, subjected to in terms of loads. So you can actually, when you are designing the car, you can actually incorporate all of those loading conditions, all of those full vehicle simulations uh, into your design process and have a, uh, the component properly loaded and sized to the specific loads in the car. Um, so these, so up to now, these are, I think, the common use case of the Adams car in Formula SAE that will be shared um, between, uh, you know, FSAE the, using the combustion engine and the Formula Electric or Formula Hybrid. Um, but what I am going to um, introduce now is how to use Adams car for the co simulation for Formula, SA, Formula Electric and Formula Hybrid teams. So, in order to couple Adams car simulation with MATLAB Simulink, you set up your Adams car model just regularly in Adams car, and you set up your Simulink model. Um, and then you can actually export a block from Adams car that represents the car, and you plug that um, block exported from Adams car into Simulink. And then you basically use that block as a virtual vehicle model and then uh, use the output from that model. For example, the speed of the car, the acceleration of the car, forces and torques. Um, you use that output from the M's car in your uh, as the input to your uh, MATLAB simulator controller. And then the output of your simulator controller might be some torque uh, at the motor or the steer angle or you know, this, uh, the, the throttle opening or the brake actuator. You have that uh, output simulink and you feed that back to Adam's car as the input to Adam's car. That's completing this kind of feedback loop. Um, it, is, it is very useful and the result is um, um, very amazing because you really see um, the effect of your vehicle controller uh, on your vehicle dynamics. Okay, so um, I think just want to run a very quick um, process on how to get some loads from the uh, vehicle full vehicle simulation. So I have already have the um, FSE car loaded. So this is the model that is provided by MC Software. Um, so here you see all these preloaded events. I'm running a full vehicle double lane change. Um, very simple setup. So I think uh, 60 kilometers will be uh, pretty decent speed for FSAE and select a gear for that. Okay, that's it. Um, that's all the setup I need to do for a simulation. Um, and then it just takes, you know, maybe half a minute to have the simulation done. And then if we go to the post-processing window, so I can load my uh, animation here. And here, I plot the results that I am interested in. Um, I think let's try front suspension. Might be interesting, the lower control and bar joint again. 
So here it's showing the vertical force um, at the ball joint. The, the sign depends on whether it's active uh, or, or whether it's an action or reaction force. Um, that depends on how the model is set up. Um, I think, and then I want to show the animation again. Okay, let's see. Maybe show the tire force as well. So you see how the car um, turns left first and then turns right, and you see how the load transfer actually affects the um, the force in the lower bar joint. Um, what would be interesting is also to, for example, um, if I plot force in the lower ball joint versus uh, lateral acceleration. You might have guessed that it's a, uh, you see, it's, for, this, for this model, it's actually pretty linear. Um, I think, yeah, that's, uh, it's, I know it's very quick, uh, but it shows you uh, how you can actually very simply run the simulation and get results and do your own investigation and MSCAR. You are more, like I've said before, you focus more on the results you're getting, not just trying to get something to run. Um, last but not least, some tips. Okay, uh, first is very important. You, you need to study the model. I know uh, the idea of having Adam's car and the Formula SA database is to accelerate your design, but at the same time, you, re you really need to study the model because now you are so, it is so easy for you to get the results. Um, you need to know the model so that you would know why you are getting the results you are getting. Uh, otherwise, it's just purely running simulation for fun, and it, it can actually be misleading for your design. Uh, another thing is, uh, if you run uh, atom simulation, you have a full vehicle ready, run the static vehicle equilibrium test first. Um, a lot of students have trouble running simulations like acceleration or brake or a turning. But what they're missing is that they didn't even run a static equilibrium before they go to more complex simulations. A lot of time they didn't set up the car, for example, they didn't set up the weight distribution uh, realistically. You know, you have a zero, a hundred percent weight distribution. It, it's going to totally mess up with the model. So you really need to be careful. Start with something simple uh, and then do more complex simulation later. And then um, if you have time, try to correlate your virtual model with physical testing. Uh, you should always focus on, when we talk about correlation, you should always focus on your modeling method, not numbers in the plots. You know, so you are not just matching your simulation number with the physical testing number. You know, with proper scaling and transformation, you can always make your uh, model number match with testing, but uh, you need to study something that can be carried over from vehicle to vehicle and make some make your model into a very predictive tool you know it predicts reliably the vehicle performance and then you can use that in your future design um i don't have much time today uh i went like a blast through all of these applications in from Lessie because there are so many uh, topics to, to discuss about, and each of them deserves their own webinar. Um, but I think, uh, I hope this will be some inform uh, helpful information for uh, all of the audience today. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Wei, for your very informative presentation and demonstration. All right, so now we're going to pass the presenter to Gabe, and he's gonna, going to share some uh, tips on how to get the resources you need to start using Adam's car. All right, thank you, Eugen. Uh, so the application for MSC Adam's car for Formula SAE is, is pretty simple. You start off by going to our website at www.mscsoftware.com.
facebook.com slash formula dash student. You can also Google MSC Software FSAE student and it should be the first link to pop up. And you're going to see a website that looks exactly like this. At the register here location, this is where people registered for this webinar. That will be changed to a view webinar so you can go back and view this webinar down the road. There's also a second link all the way there called um, apply here. And in this apply here, you'll be asked to input some information about your university and your team. And then we will get back to you about licensing. So when approved, you're going to receive two emails containing the following. The first will be download instructions and the other will be the licensing file that you will be asked to input when you download Atoms. Your programs that will be included will be Atoms View and Atoms Car. Atoms View is for the generic Atoms multi-body dynamics tool and uh, this is very applicable to a lot of what Ijin was saying at the beginning with different examples. The Atoms Car is the automobile specific one. This is a platform that we have our formula SAE template, and this is a platform you'll mostly be doing uh, using with FSAE. So the sponsorship package includes a few things. Um, first of all, the free commercial license, so you won't be restricted by a student version. The other thing which I really want to emphasize is the, the FSAE specific tutorial kit and the vehicle template. So this was designed by MSC engineers so that you already have a ready-made template, which this means is you don't have to create your own assembly to start getting results from running analysis. You can use our template and input your own values such as center of mass, uh, some suspension geometry, maybe your spring stiffness, and beginning, begin getting results immediately, and you can always customize it to fit your vehicle as well. So you also get a 12-month 12 12 month licensing term with it, and this can, of course, be renewed you will also get limited technical support. Um, for license renewal, we just ask that you give us a case study submission at the end of the year of how you use Adam's car and uh, how it helped your project. And we will feature your case study on our website, so that's beneficial to you as well. Finally, we do ask that you list us as an official sponsor on your team website and add our company logo to your website and vehicle. And we also ask that you make yourselves available for an interview or a case study. So thank you very much. At this time, we're going to go to question and answer and uh, answer uh, a few of the questions you've asked in the chat box. And again, if you have any questions at this time, please include them and uh, we will try to get, the, get to those as possible.